What's going on guys? This episode of Strange Garage is brought to you by uh, this guy because I don't have any sponsors. Nobody would pay me to do this. Check it out. A couple years ago, I started an engine swap in my boat with a donor engine coming from a 1992 Ford Ranger. It was a pretty substantial project and it single-handedly showed me what I want from a boat. For some reason, I never posted the update video, so here it is. The complete history of my 1989 Bayliner Capri. The Stranger. This story kind of starts in my early 20s, when I was buying and fixing old Ford Rangers. My dad has driven a Ford Ranger my entire life, and I've grown to love them. They're reliable, cheap, parts are plentiful, and I just like them. Then I had a baby. A Ford Ranger simply cannot comfortably accommodate a car seat. So I got a destroyed F-150 so I can transport my family and still have a truck. And in that brief period of homeostasis, I decided I need a little chaos in my life. A boat. I've always liked water in general, but I never actually considered getting a real boat. I was always too poor. After a short period of research, I started to see boats with a familiar engine. Now, to the untrained eye, this engine is an OMC 2.3. But to me, this is obviously a Ford Pinto motor. Used in a lot of cars and trucks for decades, I was able to immediately identify this as an older version of the best Ford Ranger engine available. As much as I would love to represent myself that, oh, that's definitely the right engine, I'm sure that it'll fit, I could tell that it's a Ford engine inside of the Bayliner because it says Ford right on it. It looks really similar to a Ford Pinto motor, but I didn't know if this swap would actually work. So for me to find out, I would actually have to do it. All of the research I did online, nobody had done it before, and all I could really do was assume that they would fit together. So I had to actually start this process and get the two blocks side by side so I can compare them before I knew that this was gonna work. I may have forgot to mention that I could not afford a working boat. I could barely afford to pay rent. I certainly couldn't justify spending $10,000 on a working boat. So I had to take one man's trash and turn it into slightly less trash. I found a 1989 Baylighter Capri for $500 and I jumped at the opportunity. Boat engines have a unique set of stresses compared to cars. In colder climates, they have a tendency to crack at the water jackets if they're not correctly winterized. So when you're buying a really inexpensive boat, you run the risk of having the previous owner already ruin the engine for you. So whenever you're buying a really inexpensive boat, you kind of have to expect something like this. And especially with this one, because when I bought it, the ignition system was torn apart so he wasn't able to start it for me. I actually use that as a negotiation tool. And once I was able to put everything back together, get the engine timed, the verdict was set. It clearly needed a new engine. Lots of white smoke is characteristic of water being introduced into an engine's combustion, meaning that the engine's head or block is likely cracked. The big question here is, can I take a worthless boat, drop a Ford engine into it, and make it work? A lot of you guys are probably thinking, what a stupid idea. I'm going to do it anyway. I purchased a 1992 Ford Ranger for $460, and started ripping it apart. With both of these engines on the workbench, it became obvious that everything was going to fit together. The only missing piece of the puzzle was, there was no place to put the mechanical fuel pump on the newer engine. The newer generation engines use fuel injection, and a mechanical fuel pump couldn't generate enough pressure for fuel injectors. I could have solved this problem with a low pressure electronic fuel pump and just fitted that to the Bayliner carburetor, but I had an even dumber idea. What if I took the entire fuel injection system from the Ford Ranger and put it into the boat. 
Now, a lot of you guys probably are figuring out about now that Strange Garage isn't really about practicality or economy. Strange Garage is really about bridging the gap between what I can do and what I probably shouldn't do. I know it doesn't sound very smart. I would explain it if I understood it. It's just the way that I am. I basically needed to take this truck down to the frame to expose the entire wiring harness. I wanted to make sure I got the whole wiring harness because I didn't want to miss any crucial components of the fuel injection system. Because chasing down wiring gremlins, not something I really wanted to do when the project was already so big. Mechanically, the engine components needed slight modifications to make room for some of the fuel injection specific parts. But overall, it was a simple process, just time consuming. Once everything was hooked up, there was only one thing left to do. After a few sea trial events, I felt the boat was in good enough working order to see what the engine was good for. Nice hat. guys have already commented on my other videos and said, listen man, boat engines and car engines, they're not the same. That engine's going to blow up right away. A couple things about that. First of all, I'm glad I got a bunch of marine engine experts watching my videos. That's always helpful. Um, you have to remember what I did this swap for, because I really just wanted a boat to put around on on the lake. And the lake by my house, the speed limit's five miles per hour. So that engine will be able to run at idle forever, basically. Those engines are really well made. It can handle the abuse that I'm going to be doing to it most of the time. And as you guys have probably seen, it handled more abuse just fine. So, not worried about longevity, but even if I was, that swap that I did was cheaper than basically any outboard motor. Go try to get a 5 horse or a 10 horse outboard for less than 500 bucks, which is what that engine cost me. So, even if that engine failed, it worked. And it was going to work for longer than I really needed it to. What really was the straw that broke the camel's back with this boat was it had an unreliable outdrive. Now it worked in forward. It has an OMC Cobra outdrive and those gears are kind of famous for if your cable isn't in correct adjustment, those gears are going to eat themselves and that's what happened to the reverse gear in this outdrive. It's a big deal, but in a different outdrive, that's not going to be the reason you get rid of the boat because you can just go get a new set of gears and have it installed. OMC went out of business a long time ago, so they don't make any more gears and any gears that are on the market are extremely expensive. So it's definitely not re worth replacing the gears in that outdrive because the boat isn't worth it anymore. One day I went out to start the boat and the starter was bad. I took one look at the interior and I said, this boat isn't worth it. It's not worth the time or the money to replace the starter because even if I do the interior shot, the boat runs, but I'm not in the same place I was before. I really did not have money before. I couldn't afford anything. That was the best boat that I could afford. I can afford a real boat now, something that the family's more comfortable on. So that's the route that I went. Now, I know a lot of you guys are gonna be upset that I got rid of the stranger, but that's really only because you don't really understand Strange Garage yet. When I was working on Ford Rangers a long time ago and always getting new ones and different ones, it wasn't because there was something wrong with the one that I had. I just wanted to work on another one. I just enjoy working on and fixing things. And Ford Rangers are where I channeled my energy to do that. This boat, it was really an experiment. I wanted to prove to myself that I could do it or that it could be done. I hadn't seen any examples of other people doing it. So once it was done, I was already done with it, to be honest with you. I just wanted to do it. So that's what I did. A lot of you guys are going to call that crazy or stupid or a waste. I'm not concerned with how you choose to define it. I just call it strange. Now, if you guys enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. That actually helps me somehow. I haven't completely figured that one out yet. I have another stupid project planned that I'm going to be doing the video on that pretty soon. If you'd like to see that, go ahead and subscribe. I'd love to have you on board. If not, I'm not really concerned either way. And thanks always for doing your part to help make this world a strange place.